Dolphins have reached a very interesting stage. A few years ago, there were only a couple of players trying to figure this form factor out. But right now in the market, there are a lot of players making very good flip phones. And a prime example of what I'm talking about is this smartphone itself, the Moto Razr 50 Ultra. See, Motorola has been making flip phones for quite some time and I feel that this one is their most complete flip phone yet. The concept with this form factor is very simple. It literally folds in half to give you a compact and comfortable experience. And whenever you want, you can flip it open and there you have a big screen. So I feel that it offers best of both worlds, a compact smartphone as well as a big smartphone. Now with each iteration, the size of the cover display has increased to the point where this one is almost edge to edge and there's only cut out for the camera module. So this is the largest cover display of any flip smartphone and extremely useful. And one of the main reason why I switched to this smartphone to use as my daily driver. So as I have been using the Motorola Razr 50 Ultra for the past few days and honestly it has been a super interesting experience. I'm going to tell you everything about it. So this is me living with a flip phone that is the Motorola Razr 50 Ultra. Sit back, relax and have a cup of chai. Now before we talk about my experience, I want to show you the unboxing. Why? Because despite the smartphone being expensive, it comes with a lot of stuff inside the box. First and foremost, you get a case. Now this is very important because this form factor is kind of different and very difficult to find cases for. So I'm glad that Motorola is providing a high quality case inside the box itself. It's in two parts because this smartphone folds in half. Apart from that, there is a 68 watt charger inside the box itself and you also get the charging cable. Now the story doesn't end over here. You also get a pair of Moto Buds Plus inside the box itself. Yes, a pair of TWS earbuds inside the box. This is a superb move by Motorola because it's always great to have things inside the box. Elevates the unboxing experience. So the unboxing experience is definitely premium. Now in this video, I am not going to talk about specifications because you can literally get them anywhere on the internet. I'm going to give you my experience with this smartphone, what things I noticed while I was using this smartphone as my daily driver. So that's what I'm going to talk about. And I have divided this video into two major parts. First part is the form factor. See, one of the main reasons why someone will buy a flip phone is because of the form factor. As I said, it gives best of both worlds. It is a compact form factor and whenever you want, you can flip open the screen and you get a big smartphone. Apple, Asus and some other brands tried to launch only a smaller smartphone like a mini smartphone, but that did not do very well in terms of sales numbers. There are people who like small smartphones, including me, but majority of the people prefer a big screen. So I feel that for people who like small smartphones, this form factor makes a lot of sense. Now, the big screen inside is very tall. It's in this 21 by 9 aspect ratio. And to make things interesting, I've made this video also in 21 is to 9. So you will see black bars on the top and bottom. So this will give you an idea of the aspect ratio of this smartphone. It's very tall as compared to other smartphones in the market. But that is something that I got used to in just a couple of days. For the first couple of days, it was weird. But after that, I did not notice it that much. Now, obviously, because it is so tall, one hand usage is kind of difficult. When you flip it open, you will have to use it with two hands. Now, the cover display is one of the most interesting parts about this smartphone. As I said, it is the largest cover display of any flip smartphone and it is extremely useful as well. Motorola has done a good job in terms of the software. You can literally use any app on the cover display. WhatsApp, Instagram, YouTube, if you want to play games, if you want to play BGMI, everything can be done on the cover display. So basically, you don't even have to open the smartphone. You can do everything on the cover display itself. And this has helped me a lot. I'll give you a couple of examples over here. Say I'm shopping for something online and I get an OTP on my smartphone. I don't have to flip open the smartphone. I can see the OTP on the cover display and my job is done. Similarly, if I want to reply to someone on WhatsApp quickly, I don't have to flip open the smartphone. I can reply on WhatsApp from the cover display itself. And this has reduced my smartphone usage. Normally, what would happen is that I would pick up my smartphone to reply to a message and then I would spend 15 to 20 minutes doing random things on Twitter and Instagram. But that has reduced a lot because now I'm just using the cover display and that is less distracting. And Motorola have not cheaped out on the quality of the cover display. It's a 165Hz LTPO AMOLED panel which is bright, colorful and fast. And one more awesome use case of the cover display is the camera. You can take high quality selfies from the rear camera using the cover display. That is a very awesome experience because the selfies turn out to be of very high quality. You can shoot in portrait mode, normal mode, whatever and you will get very good photos. And say you're shooting a photo like this, then there is a preview on the cover display. So for example, if you're shooting a portrait of your friend, then your friend can 
see himself or herself on the cover display, which is a very unique experience. Basically, this acts like a mirror and is extremely useful. So to sum up the form factor point, I would say that this is a very unique form factor and one that is very useful for people who like to use a small smartphone. Because as I said, you will get best of both the worlds. I want to start with performance. This smartphone is not performance centric. It doesn't have the latest and greatest chip out there, but it does have a very good chip set for your normal applications. Instagram, YouTube, UPI payments, maybe some light photo editing here and there. For all these things, the experience is extremely smooth. Like I've not noticed any hiccups whatsoever. It has been a smooth experience. And if you want to do casual gaming, you can definitely do that. But if you are a heavy gamer or a heavy user, then this smartphone is not for you. And that kind of makes sense as well. If you want to do heavy stuff, you should go for an iPhone or an S24 Ultra. So I would say the performance of this smartphone is awesome for normal stuff and casual gaming. Now, a big part of performance is also software. Motorola is one of the few companies out there which focuses on software and giving a clean and smooth experience. And that's exactly what you get with the Razer 50 Ultra, a clean and smooth experience. It is almost stock Android without any bloatware. And even the few Moto apps that are pre-installed can be removed or disabled. A lovely almost stock Android experience with some great customization and AI features. There are a bunch of customization settings like themes, fonts, colors, everything. I also really like the large folders on the home screen. They're extremely useful because you can open the applications inside the folder without even opening the folder. That is super useful. And Motorola has also given a bunch of AI features to the smartphone because it is 2024. If a brand is not giving AI features, it is going to be left behind. So you do get a lot of AI features. Now personally, I have not used these AI features in my day to day life because I'm not someone who uses AI features. I want to use them, but currently I don't. So that's my honest reply to AI features. Now it is based on Android 14 and running on the June security patch. It has not got the July security patch. And this is where Motorola lags behind. They don't give timely software updates. We have seen this with a lot of their smartphones. So if someone from the Motorola team is watching this, please take this feedback. The software updates need to be faster and regular because you are doing a very good job in terms of hardware. Software experience is also awesome, just the updates need to be fixed. And I'm really hopeful that they will do it this year. Also, I forgot to mention that there are a bunch of themes for the cover display as well. In fact, there is something called as a creator toolkit where you can get very creative and customize the cover display. So that is a fine touch. So performance is good, software is great. What about battery life? Well, honestly, the battery life on this smartphone has been very good for me. There hasn't been a single day where I felt like the battery life is less or something like that. For my usage, which is very normal like Instagram Reels, UPI payments, maybe some light photo editing here and there, the battery life has been amazing. Easily lasted me throughout the day with like 25 to 30% left towards the end of the day. When I first started using this device, I thought that the battery life will be bad, but that was not the case. The battery life has been good for me. Now there is one major reason why I feel that the battery life has been amazing for me and that is because of the cover display. As I said, I have been using the cover display a lot and not the inside display. It's like a 60-40 split. 60% times I am using the cover display and 40% times I'm using the display on the inside. Maybe that's why I'm getting very good battery life out of this smartphone. So I feel that the experience will differ from person to person. If you use the inside display a lot, then maybe you will get lesser battery life. But as I said, for my usage, I am getting awesome battery life. As far as the charging goes, you do get fast charging and a charger inside the box itself. That is kind of sorted. And you also get wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. This gets me to one of the most interesting or controversial points with this smartphone. That is the cameras. So on the rear side, there are two cameras, a 50 megapixel primary camera with optical image stabilization, and then a 2X telephoto camera. Motorola have ditched the ultra wide angle camera for this smartphone, which is a very weird move according to me. See, it's okay that they skipped the ultra wide angle camera, but instead of that, they just gave a 2X telephoto camera. It at least should have been a 3X or 4X telephoto camera because at that focal length, it is useful. 2X is not a good enough optical zoom. Optical zoom should be at least at 3X or 4X. But anyway, have a look at the photos. It is doing a good job in terms of the photos. The images are detailed. If you want to edit them in post-processing, you can do that very easily. Dynamic range is also good. The shadows and highlights are exposed in the right way for the most part. There are some scenarios though where the dynamic range doesn't do that good a job. I would say for 80 to 85% of times it is doing a good job. And actually 4x zoom photos also turn out to be great with this smartphone. Like I did not notice any major quality loss at 4x zoom. Even the colors are impressive. Not too saturated and not under saturated either. I like the colors in the images produced from this camera. And it is doing a great job in terms of portrait mode as well. The 
the edge detection is good and so is the background blur. I feel that portrait mode is one place where the telephoto camera is the most useful. It is doing a great job for portrait mode. And as I said, you can use the rear camera for selfies from the cover display and selfie portraits with the rear camera using the cover display are just incredible. By default, the cover display will shoot square photos because the viewfinder is also square. So please keep that in mind. And the camera is doing a good job in all sorts of lighting conditions. There is a dedicated night mode which helps in clicking detailed photos in nighttime as well. Now the night mode is not too aggressive. I've seen smartphones where the night mode is too aggressive. It will make everything too bright, but that is not the case with this smartphone. It is a balanced night mode and I like that about it. Overall, the photos are good with this smartphone. Now, as far as video shooting goes, you can shoot up to 4K at 60 FPS from the rear camera and the video quality is good. As I said, it does come with optical image stabilization and here is a quick video sample. You can see the stabilization for yourself. I'm walking and shooting videos and I feel that it does a good job in terms of stabilization. And obviously for vlogging, it is super convenient because of the cover display. All right, this is a very quick video test with the rear camera. I am seeing myself, you know, in this cover display and shooting this video. You guys let me know how is the video quality as well as the audio quality that is coming out of this smartphone. As I said, for vlogging, it is incredibly useful because you can shoot with the rear camera and, you know, see yourself with the cover display. And this is a very quick front camera video test. Now, the front camera can shoot in 4K, so that is incredible. But because of the cover display, I feel that it makes more sense to shoot videos from the rear camera rather than the front camera. But if you want to, the option is still available. Now, as far as the selfies go, I have not clicked a lot of selfies with this smartphone because of the cover display. If I want to click a selfie, I click it with the rear camera itself. So I feel the front camera that is on the inside display will majorly be used for video calls. It will not be used that much for selfies. For selfies, the rear camera is definitely better. That gets me to the inside display. The display display on the inside is of very high quality. It is a 21 by 9 display. 165Hz LTPO AMOLED panel gets bright enough to use in outdoor sunny conditions and is a very good quality display. The colors are great, viewing angles are good and the content consumption experience is immersive. Reels, YouTube videos, Netflix TV shows and movies, everything looks very good on this display. Now I know there is going to be a question about the crease. There is a crease that you will get with the inner display because it folds in half but the crease is barely noticeable when you use the smartphone. Motorola has done a good job with the hinge. A couple of years ago, the flip phones had very ugly creases, but right now the crease is barely visible. When the display is off, then you can definitely notice the crease, but while you're using it, not so much. So that is the thing you should not be worried about. Now talking about the hinge, Motorola says that they have done a lot of testing and this hinge should last you for years. And I do believe them. I have been using this smartphone very roughly. Like I have not been gentle with it and I have not noticed any issues with the hinge whatsoever. It has been a solid and sturdy hinge. Like I can do this multiple times without being worried. And yeah, you can use the flip gestures for answering phone. Like when you get a phone, if you flip open, it will be answered. And when you flip it close, it will be disconnected. Now, as far as biometric authentication goes, there is a fingerprint scanner on the power button. It is fast, accurate and works really well. Also, there is a pre-applied screen protector on the inner display. And when I set up the smartphone, it told me to not remove that screen protector because that might damage the display. So if you end up buying this smartphone, do not remove the pre-installed screen protector because it is very important. What about the speakers? The speakers are good on this smartphone. They get plenty loud and do not distort. This smartphone is also IPX rated, but that does not mean it is waterproof. It only means that it can handle splashes. And this was also a warning that I got when I was setting up the phone. So do not put this smartphone inside a swimming pool. It can handle water splashes. And that's about it. Please be careful because this is a flip phone. It has a lot of moving parts. Do not play with water around the smartphone. All right, it is time to sum up my experience with the Motorola Razr 50 Ultra. I honestly feel that this is a very good and complete smartphone. And as I said, you should buy it for the form factor. If you want a compact smartphone while having a big screen at your disposal, then this is the smartphone to go for. What are your thoughts about the smartphone? Let me know about that in the comment section down below. If you have any questions, you can ask them as well. If you liked what you saw, then hit that like button. If you found the content worthwhile, subscribe to the channel because it would mean the world to me. My name is Harsh Punjabi and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.